April 17th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Judges, chapters 6 and 7 from the Old Testament. The Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight, so the Lord turned them over to Midian for seven years. The Midianites overwhelmed Israel. Because of Midian, the Israelites made shelters for themselves in the hills, as well as caves and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east would attack them. They invaded the land and devoured its crops all the way to Gaza. They left nothing for the Israelites to eat, and they took away the sheep, oxen, and donkeys. When they invaded with their cattle and tents, they were as thick as locust. Neither they nor their camels could be counted. They came to devour the land. Israel was so severely weakened by Midian that the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help. When the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help because of Midian, he sent a prophet to the Israelites. He said to them, This is what the Lord, God of Israel, says. I brought you up from Egypt and took you out of that place of slavery. I rescued you from Egypt's power and from the power of all who oppressed you. I drove them out before you and gave their land to you. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you are now living, but you have disobeyed me. The Lord's angelic messenger came and sat down under the oak tree in Ophra, owned by Joash, the Abizarite. He arrived while Joash's son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press so he could hide it from the Midianites. The Lord's messenger appeared and said to him, The Lord is with you, courageous warrior. Gideon said to him, Pardon me, but if the Lord is with us, why has such disaster overtaken us? Where are all his miraculous deeds our ancestors told us about? They said, Did the Lord not bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and handed us over to Midian. Then the Lord himself turned to him and said, You have the strength. Deliver Israel from the power of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? Gideon said to him, But Lord, how can I deliver Israel? Just look. My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the youngest in my family. The Lord said to him, Ah, but I will be with you. You will strike down the whole Midianite army. Gideon said to him, If you really are pleased with me, Then give me a sign as proof that it is really you speaking with me. Do not leave this place until I come back with a gift and present it to you. The Lord said, I will stay here until you come back. Gideon went and prepared a young goat along with unleavened bread made from an ephah of flour. He put the meat in a basket and the broth in a pot. He brought the food to him under the oak tree and presented it to him. God's messenger said to him, Put the meat and unleavened bread on this rock and pour out the broth. Gideon did as instructed. The Lord's messenger touched the meat and the unleavened bread with the tip of his staff. Fire flared up from the rock and consumed the meat and unleavened bread. The Lord's messenger then disappeared. When Gideon realized that it was the Lord's messenger, he said, Oh no, Master, Lord, I have seen the Lord's messenger face to face. The Lord said to him, You are safe. Do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Gideon built an altar for the Lord there and named it. The Lord is on friendly terms with me. To this day it is still there, in Ophra of the Abizarites. That night the Lord said to him, Take the bull from your father's herd, as well as a second bull, one that is seven years old. Pull down your father's Baal altar and cut down the nearby Asherah pole. Then build an altar for the Lord your God on the top of this stronghold according to the proper pattern. Take the second bowl and offer it as a burnt sacrifice on the wood from the Asherah pole that you cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did just as the Lord had told him. He was too afraid of his father's family and the men of the city to do it in broad daylight So we waited until nighttime. When the men of the city got up the next morning, they saw the ball altar pulled down. 
The nearby Asherah pole cut down and the second bull sacrificed on the newly built altar. They said to one another, who did this? They investigated the matter thoroughly and concluded that Gideon, son of Joash, had done it. The men of the city said to Joash, bring out your son so we can execute him. He pulled down the Baal altar and cut down the nearby Asherah pole. But Joash said to all those who confronted him, Must you fight Baal's battles? Must you rescue him? Whoever takes up his cause will die by morning. If he really is a god, let him fight his own battles. After all, it was his altar that was pulled down. That very day, Gideon's father named him Jerob Baal, because he had said, let Baal fight with him, for it was his altar that was pulled down. All the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east assembled. They crossed the Jordan River and camped in the Jezreel Valley. The Lord's Spirit took control of Gideon. He blew a trumpet, summoning the Abizarites to follow him. He sent messengers throughout Manasseh and summoned them to follow him as well. He also sent messengers throughout Asher, Zebulun and Naphtali and they came up to meet him. Gideon said to God, if you really intend to use me to deliver Israel as you promised, then give me a sign as proof. Look, I am putting a wool fleece on the threshing floor. If there is dew only on the fleece and the ground around it is dry, then I will be sure that you will use me to deliver Israel as you promised. The Lord did as he asked. When he got up the next morning, he squeezed the fleece and enough dew dripped from it to fill a bowl. Gideon said to God, Please do not get angry at me when I ask for just one more sign. Please allow me one more test with the fleece. This time make only the fleece dry while the ground around it is covered with dew. That night, God did as he asked. Only the fleece was dry and the ground around it was covered with dew. Jeroboam, that is Gideon, and his men got up the next morning and camped near the spring of Herod. The Midianites were camped north of them near the hill of Morah in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, You have too many men for me to hand Midian over to you. Israel might brag, Our own strength has delivered us. Now announce to the men, Whoever is shaking with fear may turn around and leave Mount Gilead. 22,000 men went home, 10,000 remained. The Lord spoke to Gideon again, There are still too many men. Bring them down to the water and I will thin the ranks some more. When I say this one should go with you, pick him to go. When I say this one should not go with you, do not take him. So he brought the men down to the water. Then the Lord said to Gideon, Separate those who lap the water as a dog laps from those who kneel to drink. Three hundred men lapped. The rest of the men kneeled to drink water. The Lord said to Gideon, With the three hundred men who lapped, I will deliver the whole army, and I will hand Midian over to you. The rest of the men should go home. The men who were chosen took supplies and their trumpets. Gideon sent all the men of Israel back to their homes. He kept only three hundred men. Now the Midianites were camped down below in the valley. That night the Lord said to Gideon, Get up, attack the camp, for I am handing it over to you. But if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant, and listen to what they are saying. Then you will be brave and attack the camp. So he went down with Pura, his servant, to where the sentries were guarding the camp. Now the Midianites, Amalekites, and the people from the east covered the valley like a swarm of locusts. Their camels could not be counted. They were as innumerable as the sand on the seashore. When Gideon arrived, he heard a man telling another man about a dream he had. The man said, Look, I had a dream. I saw a stale cake of barley bread rolling into the Midianite camp. It hit a tent so hard it knocked it over and turned it upside down. The tent just collapsed. The other man said, Without a doubt, this symbolizes the sword of Gideon, son of Joash, the Israelite. God is handing Midian and all the army over to him. When Gideon heard the report of the dream and its interpretation, he praised God. Then he went back to the Israelite camp and said, 
Get up, for the Lord is handing the Midianite army over to you. He divided the three hundred men into three units. He gave them all trumpets and empty jars with torches inside them. He said to them, Watch me and do as I do. Watch closely. I am going to the edge of the camp. Do as I do. When I and all who are with me blow our trumpets, you also blow your trumpets all around the camp. Then say, For the Lord and for Gideon. Gideon took a hundred men to the edge of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, just after they had changed the guards. They blew their trumpets and broke the jars they were carrying. All three units blew their trumpets and broke their jars. They held the torches in their left hand and the trumpets in their right. Then they yelled, A sword for the Lord and for Gideon. They stood in order all around the camp. The whole army ran away. They shouted as they scrambled away. When the three hundred men blew their trumpets, the Lord caused the Midianites to attack one another with their swords throughout the camp. The army fled to Beth Shitta on the way to Zerah. They went to the border of Abel Mahola near Tabith. Israelites from Naphtali, Asher, and Manasseh answered the call and chased the Midianites. Now Gideon sent messengers throughout the Ephraimite hill country who announced, Go down and head off the Midianites. Take control of the fords of the streams all the way to Beth Barah and the Jordan River. When all the Ephraimites had assembled, they took control of the fords all the way to Beth Barah and the Jordan River. They captured the two Midianite generals, Oreb and Zeb. They executed Oreb on the rock of Oreb and Zeb in the winepress of Zeb. They chased the Midianites and brought the heads of Oreb and Zeb to Gideon, who was now on the other side of the Jordan River. God, how I wish that Gideon had stayed true to you and what you had asked him to do. As we unfortunately will see in the next reading, Gideon starts to make it all about him instead of all about you. But there's a part back in the in the first part of chapter 6 where the Israelites once again are crying out to you for help because they've got themselves in trouble again. And it says, he said to them, this is what the Lord God of Israel says. I brought you up from Egypt and took you out of that place of slavery. I rescued you, rescued you from Egypt's power and from the power of all who oppressed you. And that just kind of caught in my heart when, when I was studying it, when I was reading it. Before we were saved through your son, Jesus Christ, and all of our sins forgiven, we had no choice but to be held in slavery, no choice but to be in bondage to our sin. I struggle a lot thinking about how people actually make it day to day if they are not saved. Where does that, that piece of forgiveness come into their life? How must they deal with all of the things they are doing? I, I don't know. But I do know that, that part of the reason that you sent Jesus Christ was to free us from slavery, free us from death, free us from sin. And yet we just want to head right back into slavery, whether that's sexual sin, egotistical sin, financial sin, um, sin of worshiping other gods, whether that be TV or a spouse or there's just so many things in our world that we turn to that enslave us that draw us away from the freedom that your son went to the cross to save us from. I don't know, God, I'm, I, I'm confused why we don't understand that. And yet we're so much like the Israelites. You saved us from bondage and all we want to do is just run right back into it. And then we scream out for help. <laughs> save us from slavery. And you come in and you love us so much and you're filled with so much grace and mercy and you save us and then we're just back into uh, anger and jealousy and, and frustration and, and lust and all these things that enslave us. God, you already broke the chains of our slavery multiple times. Technically, we only should have had it once with the death of your son, Jesus Christ. 
but yet you've come back and you've helped us out of the bondage of sin over and over and over again, pouring out your forgiveness and helping us get out of that situation. It is only through your strength that we will ever be able to fully come out of those situations. God, I just lift up to you today whatever slavery everyone is in. People have so many different enslavement opportunities that they've run back into. Out of what we would call as comfort, it's something that we know. It may not be healthy, but it's something that we know. Um, for some of us, that's worry. Worry is a huge enslavement. For some of us, it's egos, huge enslavement. For some of us, it's worshiping other gods. And the gods of, especially the United States, are just <laughs> overwhelming what we can just dis get distracted with. God, I just ask you that one, you show us clearly that we are once again placing ourselves in bondage, that we are once again placing ourselves in slavery instead of your freedom. Two, I pray that our hearts would recognize what freedom feels like. When I talk about that peace that's inside of me, that is that freedom. That freedom that I am free from death, free from sin, stain in my life. I've been given forgiveness for all of those things. I've been given strength by you to get out of those situations. And three, God, I just pray that people ask you for strength. None of us can get out of slavery on our own. We see this in the Israelite story and we'll continue to see this in the Israelite story over and over again. Only you can get us out of this choice of slavery. You know, if we, if we helped a, a young child get out of slavery, perhaps she was a slave trade child, and we did whatever we had to and risked whatever we needed and paid whatever we needed and, and we got her out of that situation, and we got her someplace safe that was filled with love, where she had education and she had clothing. She had people who she could trust and who cared deeply for her. And yet one day we wake up and we find that she has left on her own accord and gone back to her abductors, her abusers, the people who put her in that sexual slavery to begin with. I can only imagine that what we would be feeling is a small part of what you feel when we continually put ourselves back in those slavery situations over and over and over again, when you have offered us everything in the world, at least everything in the world that truly matters. God, I pray for everyone. I pray that they understand the gift of their freedom from slavery and that they don't go back into it through your strength. In your son's name I pray, amen.